land and all the land that you relate to. Consider the factors that have led to this current reality. And the continued violence against an invisibilization of indigenous people. Genocide, land theft, gentrification, and more. We are in a web of violence and greed. What will you do to resist this web and repair harm? Keep breathing. I invite you to bring rose colored light into your heart. This is you giving yourself love. Keep loving and taking care of yourself through this work. And now root down into the earth. Root into the deep and vast community of ancestors. Let the support of the ancestors give you the strength you need to acknowledge true and heavy histories, the strength you need to repair harm and to resist the web of violence again and again until one day together we take down the whole web and we all live liberated in this more rooted and expansive place. Throughout this final session, I invite you to just stay in touch with your body, stay in touch with your breath. And you can softly open your eyes if they're shut, you can turn on your video if it's off, if you'd like to. And I invite you to share your name and the land acknowledgement in the chat box at this time. And we'll share some resources which we've been sharing, which um, provide information about land acknowledgements too. So thank you. And I will pass it to Sarah at this time. Thanks, Leah. Thanks for a really wonderful opening. Um, Lynn, I'm wondering if you can bring the slides back up again. So um, I am at Polk's Folly Farm today, which is the traditional homelands of the Tano and Tiwa people. Today, many descendants of these folks still live here on historic Henarizo land grant villages. It's the East Mountains outside of Albuquerque. Indigenous people of this place have made and continue to make innumerable contributions to this region, in particular millennia of thoughtful and effective land stewardship in spite of suffering several centuries of colonization, land theft, and many other types of inhumane and violent treatment. And I've said this many times during the conference, but I continue to be committed to building partnerships with these neighbors. Uh, and I recognize the value in their knowledge in rectifying wrongs of the past and in creating space for their leadership because it's requisite for us to heal our planet. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is walk us through what we're gonna do today, um, as well as a little bit of uh, an overview of where we've come. So, uh, looking at the agenda slide, um, we've come through welcome and framing. Uh, we're going to do something called rotational engagement. We're trying to come up with a really good uh, rotational grazing pun <laughs> for this. We're going to do some um, rapid fire, uh, get to know some of your fellow conference attendees, um, answer a quick question, and be prepared to answer back into the chat box things that you've heard. So we'll do that twice. We'll do a larger breakout session, which we're calling Around the Pasture. Um, we will do some synthesis of this learning. Uh, we're gonna talk about what, what are we gonna, from the learning and knowledge that we are taking away from these many sessions over the last four weeks, um, how is this gonna move us forward? What kind of action are we gonna take? Um, we're gonna uh, take some time to be grateful for each other's company and for that learning and for other things. And then we will be taken out with some song and some dance. So this is gonna be exciting, I hope, to have some movement in this session. So that's the agenda for today. Lynn, if you could move to the next slide. 
I know you guys have seen this many times, but just to reiterate, um, please put your name uh, in so that we can see who you are, unless you're calling in. Um, when you're speaking, please speak from your experience, listen to learn and give space. Uh, if you can, please leave your camera on. Um, mute when you're not speaking, but I will say today, we're gonna ask everybody to unmute yourself several times. And so just tune into where you do that and be prepared to. Um, please be present, patient and empathetic as we move through this. Uh, amplify value. Um, remember that there is no right or wrong, that we all just come with our own experience and um, uh, have space and allowance for guidance and facilitation. Next slide, please. So I think everybody is pretty good at Zoom at this point, but if you need to rename yourself, three dots in the upper right-hand corner of your um, little uh, picture window is where you can do that. Um, at the bottom bar uh, in the lower left-hand corner is where you can mute and unmute yourself or turn your camera on or off. Along that bar, more towards the middle, is also the chat box. Uh, if you can't see one of those things, click the three more buttons and they should uh, be options there. Um, if you want to change your view, you can do that in the upper right hand corner. All right, next slide. If you need help, if you're getting stuck, you can call tech support 505 393 1355. Um, if you're having a, an issue during the session uh, or a concern comes up, please mes message the host in the chat privately or call that same number. Um, our volunteers, as usual, are identified by volunteer in front of their name. Um, and then finally, of course, we recognize this is a long session. We'll be here for two hours together. So if you need to get up, stretch, get a glass of water, please do so. It's been a, definitely a theme through this year's conference is take care of yourself. Um, you are very important. Um, so uh, put that at the top of the priority list. Okay, so um, next slide, please. So where have we come with this year's conference? Um, we've come a long way. We've been together for four weeks and we really appreciate all of you who have stuck with us. We know that we, um, it's a big commitment that we asked for. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of recap um, where we've come and what we're gonna do now is go through some slides very rapidly um, that are word clouds. So we took text um, from the chat box, from quotes that were captured, from notes that were taken during each of these sessions. And we've created these word clouds and they will all be posted in our virtual conference center. So our first session, um, oh, and just to say this also, we did, so you guys know what you've participated in. Um, we've had, I think, 14 workshops, six plenary sessions, uh, four keynotes, um, uh, as well as this final session. So a ton of content and all of that content will continue to be available to you. And I hope that it is a conversation starter um, as we move through the rest of this year and into next year, um, if you're looking to have these conversations with people in your community. So uh, we started with uh, regenerate, regenerative agriculture in the face of climate change. We had Lakeisha Odom, Lauren Poncia, Brian Van Stypen and Chris Mijas with us. Um, and uh, these are some of the themes that emerged um, and some of the quotes, uh, commitment, intentionality, purpose, Lakeisha shared with us. Be part of the solution and the focus and focus less on challenges and issues. Uh, instead, focus on leveraging what works and what to try, Chris. Come together more across common goals, focusing on where uh, your food comes from and supporting those who are uh, trying, Lauren. Think beyond what can happen locally and uh, at the current generation and look to the next seven generations. Brian, next slide, please. Next, we had community resilience during uncertain times. We had Ade Romero, Zach Ducheneau and Roberto Meza. And Zach asked us a really important question. What could we accomplish with what, uh, uh, what could we accomplish and what resilience uh, what would resilience be if our systems worked 
uh, with and for us rather than against us. And the day shared with us that empathy and the ability to care for one another is a form of resilience. Um, next slide, please. We talked about collaborative land restoration for resilience. We had uh, Dara Oswald, Ver Valerie Small, Rodrigo Sierra Corona, and Aubrey Strait Krug. Ecosystems within reservations throughout the US are best protected when those people design, lead, and economically benefit from and participate in their care and management. Valerie Small. Walk in their shoes. Bringing a regenerative approach is asking people to rethink or change their minds. One thing that is hard for humans to do is change their minds. Don't push too hard. We should become approachable examples. Sierra, Rodrigo Sierra Corona. Next slide, please. Next, we talked about decolonization and indigenization. It was a panel that um, where folks who were in the film gather. And that film, if you didn't watch it, we encourage you to watch it, it is on iTunes uh, and on Amazon. Um, please share that with friends as well. We had Ade Romero, Sanjay Ra um, Rawal, uh, Twyla Casador, um, Elsie Debray, um, and we had Ed Ironcloud join us <laughs> during that session as well. It's been really um, magical to have people uh, pop in who are not technically plenary speakers and really make con uh, significant contributions. Um, so traditional knowledge is about how the world works fundamentally and it encapsulates all of the relationships and interconnectedness between concepts and different beings that it is ne that is necessary to find actual solutions to the problems we face today. I'll see Debray. Next slide, please. All right, then we had a great panel on uh, creative marketing for expanding regenerative agriculture sales. Um, on this panel, we had Marshall Johnson, Catherine Bedell, Jillian Sandbrook, and Katie Bell Miller. Uh, Catherine told us, ranchers are not making enough money to be able to change their systems, to be more bird friendly, um, uh, oh, that cut off there. <laughs> climate friendly, low water use. We uh, need to send more back to the rancher and to make this happen, we have to work together. Next slide, please. So our final plenary yesterday uh, was activating where you are, community gate engagement and rural spaces. Um, we had, uh, this was another panel where we had somebody join us. Um, thanks, Alex. Uh, our uh, Plenary speakers were Ben Getchell, Kate Clyatt, Mariana Javala, uh, and Shalini Kara. Uh, and of course, Alex joined us. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure kids of different cultures and backgrounds have a place on the land, no matter what their cultural history. So when uh, they do go to a farm or national forest, they don't feel like they have to walk on eggshells, Alex. This is a part of your journey, the blood, uh, memory that you carry from so many backgrounds of being conqueror and the conquered. Uh, what is the trauma I carry that is mine? And what is the trauma I carry that isn't mine that is passed down from generation to generation? What space can I fill that, does, that doesn't overtake space that should be meant for others? Mariana. Before farming was trendy, people of color all over the world have been doing this uh, since the beginning of our species because uh, we all have to eat. We all, uh, we need to acknowledge um, that it's not an equal setting. Shalini. Next slide, please. We also had a bunch of really great uh, keynotes. Um, we had um, Joe Maxwell, Vandana Shiva, Matthew Rayford, and Javon Sage. Uh, and um, Matthew Rayford joined us twice, um, and Mary Berry also joined us. And I'm, I'm not going to read all of these quotes. I'm just going to have Lynn um, sort of move through them. Um, so Lynn, if you want to pause on each of them. Go ahead to the next one. Oh, you can. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not gonna say goodbye quite yet. Um, you can uh, turn off the slideshow. Great. So we um, we've come a long way, and we've talked a lot about a lot of um, both provocative, um, challenging, um, and I think inspiring topics. Um, so I we put this to you uh, initially just so that 
your wheels are spinning and um, prepared to reflect on those um, as we move through today's session. So the next thing that we would like to do is just take a little bit of time to thank all of the people who have made this possible. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, and what I'd like you all to do is in the chat box while we are talking is think about a person that you have interacted with and what you appreciated about that interaction. So it could be a tech support interaction or uh, an interaction you had with a facilitator. Maybe it was a fellow conference attendee, but if you could put that in the chat box right now, that would be fantastic. So um, the first group of folks that I would like to acknowledge is our facilitation team from the outside. Um, we, there is no way that we could have done this without their support and guidance. Um, Tuesday, Ryan Hart uh, was um, a friend uh, and acquaintance um, that I knew through a fellowship program that I participated in um, several years ago. And she is an amazing facilitator. And I, I went to her to ask for help. And she has been extremely gracious in bringing her team to this work. And it has been a real pleasure to work with them. And I wanted to create just a very brief space, and I, I don't even know if they have been totally prepped for this, but wanted to um, invite uh, our outside um, facilitation team to say something about working with all of us in this moment, if you would like to, and you don't have to, that's okay. Um, I think I saw several of you come in, so I just wanted to say, you know, with the deepest gratitude, thank you for coming and helping us create uh, a great space um, for our community. Hi everyone, it's Summer. I just came in, um, so I heard the invitation um, and I'm the chronic first starter in the outside. Um, so I'll just say that um, my experience um, it was fast moving, um, it was enriching, um, it was emergent. Um, and uh, so it asked for a heavier lift than I anticipated, but I always felt mel met by the Regenerate team. Like I didn't um, feel like we were being asked to show up in a way that you guys weren't showing up. So it made doing the work um, pleasurable and increased my in investment in doing it because I was meeting people who were um, so open, so honest, so helpful, so kind, so caring, had very great attention to detail. And um, so if I had to say like, and so for the most part, this was a really beautiful experience um, for me. And if there was one, you know, like one comment, if, there, if we could rewind and what the only thing I would have asked for is more time. Like if we had started earlier, I think some of the lifting wouldn't have felt so heavy because we're both small teams. Um, but other than that, it was a really great process for me, both professionally and personally. Thanks, Summer. Uh, I can oh, hey, Brona. <laughs> Hello, and apologies for uh, not having my camera on. I'm just from another meeting. So friends, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expose you all to my tired face. Thank you uh, so much for uh, this invitation to just offer in a few words. The deepest, deepest heartfelt gratitude to you all in co-creating this conference. You know, thank you for saying you couldn't have done it without us, but really uh, your willingness to jump in, the skill with which you are all natural facilitators, your real thoughtfulness around how to use process to bring out the conversations that you wanted people to have, recognizing that this was virtual, recognizing that this was a wholly different experience, just you know, really brought a real lens to, to being thoughtful around how we created that. And I really appreciated uh, your passion for the subject and for this, for the people that you were convening and for your speakers and for the care that you wanted to pay attention to your speakers. Uh, so really, uh, it, we always talk about good facilitation being a kind of match of good content and good process. And so like, there's just this sense of like, uh, yeah, uh, I feel that both of those were there. And that was like, thanks to everybody who was involved. 
And I also just want to say you're like one of the bravest teams I know. And I can't believe you've attempted the work that you have attempted. So to each one of the Regenerate team, a huge, huge well done for what you've delivered. And I hope you all have a, a good rest and maybe a beer at a few meetings. Thank you. Thanks, Brona. Again, uh, th this team has been amazing. Um, the outside, thank you so much. Really wonderful. Um, I also want to thank our participants. Um, you all uh, are, you know, really what motivate me, and uh, I think probably motivate the rest of our team as well, um, and and keep us really leaning in to the work and um, to uh, making Regenerate happen and, and really being committed to it being uh, a space where we are coming together as um, a community, asking hard questions, challenge, challenging ourselves to do um, better work um, and be better land stewards, um, create healthy food for our communities. Uh, so thank you for being here. It's really wonderful. Um, uh, and then the last thing I will say is that, um, we always do this <laughs> one time during our conference and I'm going to do it now, which is to say that we are small nonprofit organizations and we rely on the support of folks like you, um, to make what we do possible. Um, and, uh, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, uh, things asking for our support right now. And I think that there are those that are very high priority. Um, you know, we've seen an increase in mutual aid societies this year um, to ensure that uh, those who are most vulnerable in our communities are supported. And so um, I know that there's gonna be a lot of asks coming at you. Um, I ask you to consider our organizations um, uh, as you're thinking about what kinds of uh, support um, you can give. Um, so yeah, as you're winding down your year, consider making a donation to uh, the American Grass-Fed Association, Holistic Management International, or the Kavira Coalition. Um, we really appreciate it and uh, are committed to showing up 110% um, for you uh, uh, and are grateful for the support that you provide. So um, thank you. Uh, the next thing, I'd like to do is hand it off to Leah and we're gonna just go through some other thank yous really quickly. Thanks Sarah and thanks Brona and Summer. That was wonderful. Um, I wanna first just thank the volunteers. Uh, we really couldn't have done it without the volunteers and you all stepped into something that was new to all of us, like to us included and you brought your ideas, you brought your wisdom, you brought your technological knowledge, like. We like literally like it was a group effort and you know when we all got together to sort of do our first orientation um you know you all helped by like giving us ideas on how to respond to questions about technology that you know I didn't have the answer for so thank you for just stepping into this mysterious process with us and taking it head on and it's been awesome to have you here um and I just hope you stay in touch with us and also just to staff same thing like everyone, all the staff members on the conference team and at Kavira that have, and at HMI and at AGA that have made this possible. Um, you put so much into this, so many hours, so much labor. And I know that sometimes it was kind of crazy making and, and we did it and we did it together. And thank you so much for putting your all into it. And, um, and soon we can all just relax, you know, and, um, also, I just wanted to give a shout to Dr. Jacobson, who's not here yet, and Eva will introduce her later. She's our musician today. Um, so at the end of this, we'll be able to dance and just enjoy some music together. And then also want to thank the NAP apprentices who have been really present. I've been noticing you really engaged in so many different sessions. And I just want to do a shout out to you all. Um, you've done such great work this season, and I, I uh, hope to get to know you all better um, in the future. So thank you all. And I will pass to Carrie Balcom. And, and Carrie. Uh... I'm coming. I'm sorry. I'm having technical issues. I'm trying to do two, two Zoom meetings at the same time. Carrie, on... I, I, uh, can, I can do yours for you if you want. 
Uh, no, I'm here. I, you can do it as, if you'd like. I just wanted to say thank you. I'm trying to do, do two Zoom meetings at the same time. I've been in task to be part of the Biden transition team for agriculture, so I'm a little distracted. So, but anyway, we're here. Sarah, go ahead and do it for me while I can listen to the other one. <laughs> sure. Thank so we, we asked Carrie to thank our speakers. Um, they volunteer their time and it's extremely generous that uh, all of the wisdom, experience, knowledge that they bring. Um, uh, it takes a lot of hours of preparation before each of these plenaries. So um, thank you all. Um, we'd like to recognize and acknowledge our herd fellows. Um, you also have been extremely present throughout the conference. Thank you. Um, uh, you often are more visible when we are all in person, um, but uh, I think that your contribution um, in the chat boxes and in the breakout groups um, has been extremely recognized and very valuable. Thank you for being with us. Um, I want to thank our media partners uh, for helping us get the word out, workshop organizers. You also put in a ton of time. Uh, thank you. You really made this event happen. Um, Steph? Thanks, Sarah. Uh, we also wanted to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out of gratitude to all of our sponsors, the No Regrets Initiative and Piscinus Ranch, the Herd, Thornburg Foundation, 11th Hour Project, the Regenerative Ag Foundation, Nancy Rainey and David Levy, the Towski Valley Foundation, Tomcat Ranch, Farm Credit of New Mexico, Farrell Ranch, Fort Union Ranch, Lone Mountain Ranch, the Lydia B. Stokes Foundation, Other Half Processing, the Animas Foundation, the CS Foundation, Green Fire Times, and High Country News. All of you are an integral part of our community and this conference and conversation wouldn't have been possible without you. Thank you. I'd also like to thank all the exhibitors who built out virtual spaces and participated in our virtual exhibitor hall. And also thanks to those of you that sent in short videos introducing yourselves and your projects. It was really wonderful seeing you all out in your natural environments since we can't do that as much in this virtual setting. Um, if you haven't checked out the sponsors page, exhibitor space or participant videos yet, we will be keeping the virtual conference space open through the end of the year. So be sure to go ahead and check that out when you have time. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, thanks, Steph. Um, and then, uh, I would now like to turn it over to uh, HMI's new director. Um, Wayne, would you like to take the, take the screen? Uh, thank you, Sarah. Oops. Um, my name's Wayne Knight and I've recently arrived in the US from South Africa to join HMI. Uh, it's an honor to be part of this passionate and capable team. HMI um, is privileged to be connected with our collaborators in this conference, um, the Quivera and the American Grass Fed Association. Um, more committed, creative, and enthusiastic people you'd struggle to find. I'm sure you'll all agree. I've been a holistic management rancher like my father before me in Northern South Africa. The area has been the hotbed of conflict for hundreds of years. Prior to surveying and apportionment in the 1870s, the area was known, has known many peoples. The Makapans Caves nearby was home to pre-human hominid species, Australopithecus. The cave records one of the longest continually inhabited places known. From here, the, from this cave, the Khoisan people were displaced by the Bapedi, who were displaced by the Ndebele, who were displaced by the Boers and then the English. Under apartheid, the area was dominated by Afrikaans people. Now it is under Bapedi majority rule. And our new home in North Texas was home to the Wichita tribe. We live in challenging times. We crave stability. The stability we crave and have had the luxury of enjoying, environmentally speaking, has been dependent on resilience of the natural order, the order that we neither understood or respected. 
Watching David Attenborough's documentary, A Life on Our Planet, he speaks eloquently to the problems we have created and the challenges we face. It is humbling to realize the task ahead of us will succeed or not by our ability to work together as a species. A decision to put aside our differences over relative trivia and blame apportionment in order to focus on what can be done we stand at the cusp of a huge challenge. We know what the solutions could be. In borrowing from Kate Rayworth's Donut Economics, can we, quote, meet the needs of all within the means of the planet? We must ensure that we do not overshoot the Earth's life supporting systems. We must create real equity real changes and real solutions. The notions of privilege must, what notions of privilege must we jettison to found a new ecologic, eco, ecology first imperative? As we take on these challenges in our own unique way, the sharing and community that is encapsulated by this conference is a metaphor for what we must live every day. Collaborate, listen, share, and do. To quote Nelson Mandela, it is in your hands to make a better world for all who live in it. In closing, I want to thank Anne Adams, Holistic Management International's Executive Director. She has been part of this organization for over 20 years. She has worked passionately, embracing holistic management wholeheartedly. Her achievements and accomplishments are huge. She has left her mark on HMI and the practice of holistic management worldwide. We at HMI are tremendously grateful to her. Anne, you are a rare gem, steadfast, capable, eloquent, principled, and passionate. Thank, thank you for all you have done and will yet do for HMI. You have set a high bar. We salute you. Over to you, Sarah. Thank you, Wayne. Um, in perhaps a less eloquent way, uh, I will just say that I'm extremely grateful to Anne as well. I'm excited to start working with Wayne. Um, and uh, yeah, kudos to you all on, on thoughtful transition. You know, it's something we all aspire to. So, um, all right. So now we are going to have some fun, I hope. <laughs> The next thing we are going to do is uh, what we're called we're, what we're calling a rotational engagement, <laughs> and we are going to toss you into very small um, breakout rooms with one and maybe two other people. Uh, you're going to have approximately two minutes in each of these rooms, so there's there's no time really for being shy. <laughs> and when you get there, what we're going to ask you to do uh, is to say your name where you are, and one thing that challenged you in the most positive way during this conference. And uh, we will let you know when you're halfway through that two minutes. And it's really important to let everybody in your group say something because when we come back, what we're gonna ask you to do is we're gonna ask you to reflect back in the chat box what somebody else said. So um, what we're gonna do now is uh, Tyler is going to send us all into breakout rooms. You're hopefully going to be there with somebody you've never met before. Please say your name, where you are, and one thing that challenged you in the most positive way. And you can say technology, but I hope you will <laughs> reflect on the content. Um, uh, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to do it two times. So you're going to be with somebody for two minutes, and then you'll be bounced off to somebody else. So here we go. You might end up with two people too. So make sure if, if you're with two other people, you just give everyone time to, to talk. Yep. We're ready, Sarah. Here we go. All right. Exhilarating. 
Yeah, very, very fast conversations. I think I was cut off on both of them, but I'm uh, grateful to have seen the folks that I did. I actually ended up in rooms with people I knew both times, which was really wonderful to connect with people I haven't connected with in a while. So um, what I'd like to invite all of you to do is to put into the chat box now um, what you heard. What did um, uh, one of the folks you were in a room with say? Um, so go ahead and, and put that in the chat box now. And um, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, introduce you to what our next um, session, uh, breakout session is going to be. Um, and we're now going to ask everybody to join larger breakout groups. And this is going to perhaps be more familiar to you than um, what we have uh, just done. Um, this is going to feel more like what we've done in some of our other plenaries. We're going to give you all about 25 minutes to talk in groups of about a dozen people. And we have two questions for you to discuss. Um, and, and these questions may feel similar to the question that we just asked, but what were your aha moments? When did a light bulb go off for you? I know that I had several um, that happened uh, during the conference. Um, and I'm not going to put it in the chat box, but um, uh, I heard uh, Hannah uh, Gosnell say that she was really inspired by Joe Maxwell's talk and made her realize that um, she's really excited and interested to learn more about ag policy and climate policy and um, that there were some aha moments for her in that session. So aha moments. And then the other thing is that we know that everybody leaves maybe with more questions than they come in with. So the other question is, what questions came up that weren't answered? Um, we will have a group map and group map is um, that virtual uh, board that we have where you can create post-it notes. Um, and you will see both questions on the group map, one on the left and one on the right. And um, you can designate a note taker in the space. I think Leah's gonna put the group map in the chat just now. For those of you who are on a computer and you feel good about taking notes, go ahead and click it and open it so that you can see it. You'll need to put in your email address perhaps to get into that space, but um, you will be able to go there. And um, so we're gonna send you into these rooms. If there's not a volunteer there, the volunteer can take notes if they are there, but if there's not, please designate somebody to be the note taker who has opened the group map. If there are several people taking notes, that's okay too. Um, totally acceptable. We want to capture as much information there as possible. Um, and just to let you know, all this information that we are capturing, <laughs> um, we are in addition to creating word clouds and recording our sessions that we will be sharing with everybody, we're also going to be doing some deeper synthesis of all this information and producing something um, uh, early next year. I don't know what that will be. Maybe it's something written. Maybe it's an audio file of some kind. Maybe it's a video. Um, that is TBD. But just know that we are taking all of this and taking it very seriously. It also is going to inform our programming in the future. <laughs> so we really appreciate it. Um, so back to what we're doing. Aha moments. What are your unanswered questions? Talk about those with your group. When you go into the session, again, your name, where are you? And then dive right in because we don't have that much time together. So um, Tyler, take us away. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. That was um, a really fun and fruitful conversation. I haven't had the pleasure of being in too many of the breakout <laughs> groups during our plenaries because I've been doing other things in the background. So it was really fun to um, connect with some of you. I know folks got 
there may be a might have been folks uh, who sort of got their thought cut off there at the end, but I think uh, I hope most of what you were all were saying was captured. Um, so uh, what we would like to do now um, is uh, I'm going to have I'm going to turn the screen over to Leah and she is going to lead us through a little bit of um, reconnecting with our, our bodies. And while she's doing that, several of us are going to be working in the background to look at all of your aha moments and questions to uh, identify some emergent themes. So Leah, it is all yours. Thanks, Sarah. That was super interesting um, hearing what you all had to say. Wow. Um, so at this point, we're just going to do some gentle movement and it's going to be about five minutes. So it's also a nice time if you're feeling the need to get a glass of water or go to the bathroom. This, this is a moment to just rest, reset. So if you're staying here with me, um, we're just going to ground into our bodies. So I invite you to find a nice, comfortable position. If you feel more comfortable having your camera off, feel free. It's up to you. No, no worries there. Um, and just rock back and forth a little bit. Just feel that groundedness, that connection between you and your seat or the earth. I see people already pulling out stretches. So yeah, do whatever feels good. If you have a movement that is calling to you, I'll lead you through some too. So do what feels right. Let's your breath elongate. So deepen it, elongate it. Really see if you can focus on your exhale. Let all that trapped air, that stale air, let it, let it out. And then we're gonna do some simple shoulder rolls. So I just invite you to lift your shoulders up and back. If you want, you can kind of time it with your breath. Inhaling as you come up, exhaling as you go back. Now we're just going to reverse direction and roll the other way. Just let whatever tensions you're holding, just for this time, just let them go. No need to be anywhere but in our bodies right now. Then bring your shoulders up to your, towards your ears and let them just drop. Inhale them up and then exhale, drop. Do that a few more times on your own pace. Or at mine, if you wanna follow my pace too, that's fine. Then you can just let your shoulders be, shake a little bit, let them relax. Then we're just gonna do some head rolls. So you can drop your head down in front and then roll it over your right ear towards your right shoulder. And you're letting your head come all the way around. Go nice and slow. If you hit a knot or something, I suggest just easing up a little bit. There's no need to hurt yourself. Just do what feels good. So we'll do one more in that direction. If you want, you can even breathe. Um, you can exhale as you come down and you can inhale as you come back up. So then we're gonna rotate the other way. Then when you're done with that, just lift your head back up to neutral. Then I invite you to put your hands on your knees or if it's easier to put them on a table, that's fine too. And we're gonna do what's 
in yoga, it's called a cat cow, um, but we're just going to stay seated. So if you have the, the privilege, the wonderful opportunity of checking out Alexis's um, self-care session, she talked about some of the ways that, you know, producers tend to um, to hold their backs in a way that concaves their backs a lot. So it's really important to stretch and open up and to feel that sort of convex action in your back. So this will sort of help us get there. So when we inhale, you're just gonna bring your chest forward and kind of tip just a little bit, tip your, tip your chin back to feel that curve in your spine and to feel open in your chest and in your heart. And breathe in. And then as you exhale, you're gonna kind of curl your back. So this would be a call the cat, this is cat. If you were on the ground, it would look like a cat that was hissing at you. And then we'll inhale again into cow. I'm not totally sure why this position would be called cow, but it's what I've heard, so. You can inhale there. Oh, is the timer, I might turn that off. And exhale again, back to cat. We'll do one more time, inhaling, chest open. And exhale, back to cat. We'll come back to a nice neutral spine. And by neutral, I just mean kind of straight up and down, although the spine is naturally curved. Your shoulders are kind of melting down your backside and um, your, your top of your spine kind of feels like it's um, like a rope dangling from the sky. So just a nice loose spine. And I just want to um, invite you all to stay in your bodies for the rest of this. Just stay in your breaths and your bodies, take care of yourself, do what you need. And um, invite you to sort of come back into the space and start turning your cameras back on if you feel comfortable with that. Um, I just want to check in with Sarah and Steph and see how it's going in the back. Do you want me to lead a couple more <laughs> exercises or um, what's your status? Um, I haven't I haven't put them into groups, but I have been examining them and I, I feel pretty good about bringing in some emergent themes and I'll let Steph weigh in. <laughs> Yeah, and Sarah, I don't know if you saw my personal message, but we actually re reached the group limit, participant limit for um, group map, so I wasn't able to get in there. Oh, well, we learn things every day. <laughs> Sorry, Steph. No worries. Um, maybe if folks are in there, if, if you're a note taker, maybe exit. Um, so that Steph can kind of get in there. Thank you. Sarah, did you want to sort of lead us then through what you're finding? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, we get to the place where we are. Um, just stop, start at the the top. Um, I'm seeing a lot of um, appreciation and questions around um, diverse voices and um, everything from uh, sort of uh, folks really, I think, digging into questions about um, cultural appropriation and um, what that means and sort of where learning can happen um, that is not appropriative. Um, I think also just sort of seeing the value in diverse voices and um, a real desire to have more voices present. Um, uh, and um, to, to learn from one another. Um, I think there's also a really deep appreciation that's showing up uh, in the aha moments and the questions around um, uh, young people and um, hearing what they need and empowering them as they move into agricultural careers. Um, 
there's some really great comments that uh, it seems like Vandana Shiva's keynote was very provocative and inspiring for a lot of folks and um, I think has raised questions about uh, sort of how we think about carbon markets um, and you know if they are a perpetuation of uh, systems that um, are the systems that we are actually trying to fundamentally change. Um, I think there's also a, a theme and a thread in here about um, how do we stay connected as a community? Um, I am reading a lot of things that say people are feeling, uh, even in the context of us being here virtually together, um, connected in a really powerful way um, through this conference. Um, and I just will say that we are going to continue to make every effort to keep people connected. So uh, we will put our brains together to try to make that happen. Um, there was also uh, several uh, questions or aha moments about um, action. And we're actually going to go there uh, shortly. So that was a that was great to see that. Um, uh, oh, coming back to the diverse voices piece, I think there's also a theme that I'm seeing throughout the aha moments um, and the questions that came up about just sort of how do we bring more folks into a space where we're talking about um, what is regenerative agriculture, but how are we also um, uh, in expanding the definition of that and honing the definition of that, um, also encouraging more people to participate in it, and how are we resourcing folks to um, think that way and then to produce food that way. Um, there's also definitely uh, themes here about um, taking care of ourselves and um, really focusing on uh, how are we ensuring that we're keeping ourselves individually and our communities healthy um, as a way to um, have uh, resilience um, and also to be regenerative. Um, So I, uh, we will post all of these questions for and all of these aha moments for you to look at. Thank you for contributing them. And um, uh, Steph or Leah, do either of you want to weigh in on any emergent themes that you saw there? Um, I think, yeah, oh, go ahead. Ahead. I was going to say the biggest one that I saw, and I know Sarah, you may have mentioned this, I was just trying to get into group map was around community building and really learning to understand where we're from, to understand where we are and understand where we're going. Yeah, and one thing that has come up in multiple spaces in the speed rounds and then also in the um, other breakouts is the like, what Zach Duchesneau sort of introduced his talk with, which is like systems are designed to work exactly as they work. And so the questions of like structurally, systemically, like what, what actually needs to shift to go where we're trying to go. Um, and I see a lot of questions that are in that in that realm. Um, and yeah, you captured a lot. So thank you. Excellent. Okay, so now we are going to um, do one more uh, uh, intensive rotational engagement session. Um, it's going to be a little less intensive than the last one. We're going to give you one more minute this time. Um, uh, we're going to toss you into groups of two or three folks. Um, and we'll do this two times. Um, so hopefully you'll get to meet some new people or connect with people who you have known before. Um, and this year, we're going to talk about uh, uh, this year, this particular session, this particular round, we're going to, the question is, what will you do with what you've learned at this year's conference? Um, so pointing to that comment about sort of, we've learned a lot, what's the action? Um, now we are shifting gears into that. So what will you do with what you have learned at this year's conference? Again, your name, where are you? <laughs> and then answer that question. Tyler, take us away.
um, I don't know what everybody can see. I can see Name on my screen. I don't know if everybody's looking at me. <laughs> I see everyone. That was really okay, fun. great. Um, so welcome back everybody. I hope that that was fun and you got to connect with some people that you um, have not met or people that you know um, and really talk about sort of how do we move forward. So again, in a similar fashion, I invite you all to put something that you heard somebody else say into the chat box about what is, what's the action moving forward from the learning that we've all just done together. Okay. So I just realized that I skipped over a big chunk of our agenda, which was our directors being able to say a few words at the top of the session. And I just am going to say, I'm sorry that I missed that. And I apologize. Um, but hopefully we can offer um, both our opening and our closing thoughts for this session in one go now. <laughs> so <laughs> Carrie and Wayne, I hope that you are prepared to um, offer up some things. So the final thing, the sort of final prompt or question for this session is about um, what are you grateful for and what are you gonna offer moving forward? Um, so related to what is the action that we are leaving with, but a little bit different, um, sort of rooted in an idea of reciprocity what are you grateful for and what are you offering to this community of folks moving forward? So um, think about that and please offer that up into the chat box. And um, uh, I think that the three of us as directors are gonna say something about that. And again, I apologize that I skipped over that whole session at the, the, the front end. So um, uh, if you'd like to offer sort of both of your thoughts right now, that would be great. And Carrie or Wayne, you can lead us off, so. We'll let Wayne, go ahead. Good. I, I think um, the overall message that I'm getting from the conference is how engaged people are, how there's so much will, there's so much positive energy. People want to learn, listen, and share. And um, there are a lot of unanswered questions to single out a few. Um, people struggle with change. Um, markets are dysfunctional, um, policy someone mentioned in, in one of the chats uh, is, is such a huge consideration and concern, how to correct and, and create viable policies that can fuel, direct, enable a lot of what we as um, the participants here want to, want to achieve. What I'm grateful for is the opportunity to influence, the opportunity to have an impact. Uh, grateful for the work that we do, that we know works and that we know can have a real big change. I mean, that is, that is something we're not guessing. That's something we know. And um, what, I, what I want to take away and what I want to plan to do is to engage. Uh, I think the power of engagement as this conference shows is, is fundamental. Um, working alone, we can achieve something. Working together, it's exponential. And um, in my little opening remarks, it was, you know, we've got to wake up and realize that these differences we have are far less important than the big picture of what we're wanting to achieve. I think I'll leave it there. Hmm. What am I grateful for? Well, um, when I see the, the faces of the folks that are, are the driving force of this conference and looking at the, the faces of the farmers that are my, my uh, peer group, it's encouraging that y'all still want to do this. <laughs> it's, it's a daunting task and it's encouraging for me 
and for the farmers that, that I work with daily and have for the last, in, the, in my directorship at AGA since 03, that there's a new generation of, of people who are embracing what we started. Um, it was, it was a, um, a dying art. Um, it was the, we were going the way of industrial without any other market. So I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that people are looking to alternative markets, alternative policy, uh, equity in all forms. And um, I'm still grateful that y'all still want me around. So thank you. Thanks, Gary. Um, so our, the first questions that we were going to speak to earlier were about sort of how, um, how are we challenged? What have we learned? Um, and I just was reflecting on how, um, like both carving out the time and the space to have really hard conversations is challenging and then having them is challenging. Talking about structural racism, uh, talking about our own racism, talking about um, how we live in systems that are, are not always fair, um, that sometimes are violent, um, talking about climate change. Um, these are all extremely challenging conversations to have and um, really uh, showing up and being um, fully present and being willing to um, be uh, present and trust that 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 folks are gonna um, hear you and uh, hold space for you is um, both a challenge but is also something that like I learn every year when we have this conference um, that we have a really amazing group of people you know like we can have a fully open <laughs> chat box and um, you know, there's like a little bit of fear moving into an event like this where it's like, are people gonna behave themselves? Um, which sounds so horrible, but it's like, I'm, I'm reminded through being with you all, that's like, you guys are a stellar group of folks and um, you make having these challenging conversations um, worthwhile and productive. Um, so I am grateful for that. And I'm, I'm grateful that uh, at the end of what has been an extremely challenging year for all of us um, that I still am hopeful <laughs> and that, you know, we have things to work on together um, that I feel committed more than ever to helping to support resilience on arid working lands, which is what our mission is at Kivira, um, but also how to uh, figure out shifting <laughs> um, what resilience means so that it has uh, equitable food and agriculture systems centered um, in that resilience. Um, and so uh, what I offer is just that like, I will continue to be here and continue to show up. And um, I, I offer my ear. <laughs> uh, I love to hear from all of you and I hope that we can continue these conversations and um, I will make every effort to uh, be sure to have time and space to do that um, so that we can maintain strong relationships, um, even as we continue to navigate the weirdness that is maintaining good relationships in a time when we can't physically be together. Um, so um, yeah, I, I offer that I'm committed to adapting our work so that we can continue it. Um, so thank you all. Um, I, I really love you and appreciate you. Um, okay, so now uh, to take us out in a moment of celebration, uh, we are gonna invite in our musical guest for the day. Um, Eva, I'm gonna turn the screen over to you. Great, thank you. Um, uh, I'm really honored that uh, Dr. Christina Jacobson agreed to come in uh, and do this with us. Um, I met her through the University of New Mexico Honky Tonk Ensemble, which has just given me life um, over the last year as things have shifted, of course. Um, so, and she she started the this ensemble um, 
She's also a singer-songwriter, ethnographer, and a lover of rural places. She's been nominated for three New Mexico Music Awards. Her fourth album, House on Swallow Street, will come out with the Italian label, Talk About Records, in uh, spring of 2021. Based on a year of writing songs on the Italian island of Sardinia in a small mountain village. Um, her music can be found on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Bandcamp, and on her website, which I will put in the chat. Um, and not to put her on the spot, but um, she, the, the reason I thought of her and, and reached out to her is um, she shared this, this one of these songs um, and it was so reflective and hopeful and um, also very present. And that seemed to really um, echo a lot of the themes that I'd been, that, that we were putting together for this conference, me sitting on the outside of the, the core committee. Um, so uh, with that, um, thank you so much, Dr. Jacobson, for being here. We're really excited. Um, oh, and then I would also like to say, Leah primed us for movement, right? We've moved this much of our bodies. So uh, if the spirit moves you, um, if we were in person, you know, this might turn into a dance party. So please, um, so please feel free. Um, I know at least Leah Powell and I will be dancing. So feel free to join us. So now, turning it over to uh, Christina. Thank you so much for that introduction. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, beautiful. I'm trying out a, a new mic system here. I'm very honored to be joining the tail end of what sounds like it has been an incredibly restorative and powerful conference. I was able to tune in a little bit yesterday and um, I'm really glad to, to be here with you all. Thank you, Eva, for that very generous introduction. Um, and so I'm gonna share a couple songs uh, with, with you all this afternoon. This first song was written when I was living on a very steep mountain uh, in a restored tobacco barn in the Appalachian Mountains in Western North Carolina. And I was surrounded by a meadow that had these sheep grazing. And at one point the water stopped running in my house and I had to run up to the top of the mountain and um, clear the silt from the spring box so that the water would keep on running down. And for me, that became this metaphor of resilience in a lot of ways. And this song was also inspired. This is a co-write with um, one of my close friends and collaborator, Meredith Wilder. And um, the song was also inspired by a piece I'd, I'd heard on the radio about the, a parent that was sending their son to a screens-free summer camp. And then at the very last minute, she smuggled um, his iPhone into his backpack. And so <laughs> I thought that was a really interesting kind of, um, so the song is sort of a reflection of, of those ideas. It's called Unplug Me. I've heard tell you choose your own destiny. But lately, it feels like it's been choosing me. Blue screen on my face before the sun comes up. Drinking morning coffee from an unbrewed cup. They say to be in the world, not of it. But I've been distracted for so long, can't remember much of it. My muse is running out of patience. Someone please unplug me, allow me to breathe. Emails, messages, and Texts to send, plans to make, smiles to fake, and holes to mend. Why do I click yes to things I never planned to do? And does anyone still know how to really lend a hand to you? They say to be in the world, not of it. But I've been distracted for so long, can't remember much of it. My muse is running out of patience. Someone please unplug me, allow me to breathe. I've made my choice, use my passive. Always find a safe place face to face with what's behind. 
with what's behind the screen. Cause I'm a human being and I can't believe what I haven't been able to see. Bright sun on my back, warm rays on my face, my cup with over where meadow sheep graze. Detach my spirit from the chaos, chores and clocks. Gonna hike up to that mountain top and clear the silt from the spring box. They say to be in the world, not of it, but I've been distracted for so long. Can't remember much of it. My muse is running out of patience. Someone please unplug me. Allow me to breathe. Yeah. Someone please unplug me. Allow me to breathe. Thank you. It's so energizing and fantastic to see all you moving out there and dancing. Beautiful dancing. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to end with a final song here. This is the song Eva was referencing. And um, I wrote this in the early days of the pandemic. I got stuck in the United Arab Emirates for three months last spring. Uh, I was supposed to be there about two weeks. And this was a, a song. So I, I'm, I'm thinking of the theme that was just posed in the chat when, when I hopped on the call, which is, you know, um, and, and also from yesterday's conversation, what does resilience mean to me? And resilience for me sometimes means processing my life and processing my world through a song or through writing a song um, and getting through the other side in that particular way. And, and so this is one of those songs. It's also a, a co-write with, with Meredith Wilder. And it's called, it's called New Normal. And in the song, we were trying to dig into what are some of the things and some of the beauty that we're gonna take away from an otherwise really difficult, really painful time. So new normal. This song will be released um, on Bandcamp tomorrow. Are to die for in the morning. 
morning sunlight in the kitchen dances in your eyes. I'm so lucky to call you mine. Guess it's our new normal for now. We can confidently say it won't stay this way. Really don't mind that I can't ask when. Cause instead I'm getting used to our makeshift dinner dates. And as far as I'm concerned, the world out there can wait. Cause I'm bringing the world inside. Our living room is a library, a cafe, and an office. I can change it with a wave of my hand. Hey, neighbor. Hey, sister. Hey, darling. We can confidently say it won't stay this way. Really don't mind that I can't ask when. Instead, I'm getting used to our makeshift dinner dates. And as far as I'm concerned, the world out there can wait. New normal for now. Normal for now. New normal. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Everybody unmute and we'll just have cacophony of disjointed sounds. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a screenshot too. Yeah, All right, everyone, if your camera's off, turn your cameras on. We're gonna do a, a screenshot here. Doggy, doggy, doggy. Hi. Dogs and children and cats welcome. Hey. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Oh, you, you are. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us for this grand finale session of the Generate Conference. Thank you for. As a reminder, our virtual conference center will remain in place and open. The recordings of all of these sessions will be there. Um, the word clouds will be there. Um, uh, we also will have many of these items posted on our website. And as we are able, we'll be getting them up onto our respective YouTube channels. Um, we may also offer, offer them as audio files so you can listen to them while you're going for a walk outside. Again, I encourage you to share them with people that you want to have these conversations with. Um, and just know that we are going to continue our efforts to bring you all together over the course of the year, recognizing that we are adapting to this new normal. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jacobson, so much. Um, we will try to continue to make space for us to get together and have these conversations. And while we're still figuring out what uh, specifically when and what that means, um, it will continue to happen. So thank you again all so much for joining us. I encourage you to consider supporting all three of our organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I will ask Carrie or Wayne if you have any closing thoughts before we all wave and say goodbye. My closing thoughts are, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Anna, it's good to see you. I'll see you Anna, yeah. to, to well all done. of you. Well, well done, done, everyone, and thanks for participating. Great to see all these faces. Thank you.